How do people go to the bathroom? <laughs> if they do need to go to the bathroom, we do escort them. And then if they're on stage, they're holding it. <laughs> Can you talk a little bit about for Lion specifically, what idea came from and how was it put together? I think because it was our season one, of course, everything was kind of like a trial and error. You know, what's gonna work, what's not gonna work. With the line in particular, it, it was one of those things that like once the sketch work was done and it was very much inspired by this like royal, rich, powerful, influence type of a character for the show, very different from the rest. The mask is very unique. It's pure mold and then coated in gold to give us that texture and that feel of the richness of almost like a godlike character. When Rumor stepped into the costume and just gave it that much more life, then it became like this powerful goddess creature to me. Everything was finished by hand beating and rhinestoning and adding all the gems to the mask, adding all the gems to the costume, and she just killed it. Hollywood royalty! I remember thinking, I'm kind of like a little bit intimidated by this deer because he's like kind of <laughs> swag, like leather, it's a little yes. bit steampunk. You know, I was trying to think of if we did a deer, what's the typical route to go and then what's the non-typical route? So for me, I kind of wanted to create this wooden creature that had a story um, that kind of became this war hero steampunk element to it. It was a little bit on the darker side. But at the same sense, um, something really phenomenal happened with that costume because when Terry Bradshaw was the one that went into it, um, it was kind of an ironic moment because my mask resembled a football. And a lot of people didn't notice that. And it was a complete irony, complete accident, not planned. Um, so then from there, we took it further and um, seeing his body type and who I was working with, I went in and really elaborated on the costume and gave it that posture, that strength, that really heavy outer layer, which he was a trooper for wearing. Peacock. Peacock. Oh <laughs> That's so fabulous, so dazzling. Talk about the elements that went into creating this piece. Uh, with Peacock, I try to develop a character, I think of what is expected, you know, and right away I figured that most people would see it as a female character, um, you know, so you could do the, the elaborate gowns and all the feathers and really do something that Gala inspired, you know, and this idea of like doing some kind of showman Elvis inspired character came to me and then we gave it a shot on the artwork and when Donnie chose the costume, it was it seemed like just a complete perfect fit. You know, here's somebody that's a showman on his own and has this beautiful career and can tell a story through my costume. And at the end of the day, it just felt like a perfect match. So there were different functions to the costume, being able to take off the feathers, you know, and kind of lose his tail so he can just jump around and really perform. So I think like the idea of like who chooses the costume and me understanding really their background and where they come from, I then enhance the costume that much more to really let them become that character. What was the inspiration for Egg and how did that come together? When I first did the Egg, I kind of saw that as a suave kind of like um, very runway inspired character, you know, and with a big hat and kind of somebody we haven't seen on the show yet that could have expressed attitude immediately when they walk on that stage. Um, and then as the character kind of started developing itself, we then turned the hat instead of this like massive like fashion fedora, we turned it into an egg. So it became an egg within an egg within an egg. For me, I just want to play. And I think the fact that I have a background in fashion really helps to make these costumes so different that it's not so typecasted as, as pure costuming, but at the same time, it has that pull from my inspiration. Ladybug, oh, another standout yes. season two. Yes. Talk to me about this one. You know, out of all the seasons, that might have to be my one, of, I don't wanna say favorite. It's, it's so hard to use that word, but I think for me, that was one of my original sketches from season one. Um, it was the first attempt I took on the show and the fact that, you know, there wasn't a place for it season one and then we finally found a perfect home for it for season two. That one I think might have taken the longest out of 40 some costumes that we built throughout the three seasons. It wasn't just creating this beautiful face piece, um, unique enough, like I, I created a shell around the mask that then it looked like an opening of a ladybug because this is, is something growing up that you make a wish on, you know, and it's so important and I wanted it to be very beautiful. And Kelly and I did our first fitting. It, it was so wonderful to see her take on it and also give me the feedback. Kudos to her, man. 
you know, for being able to carry this incredible backpack on her shoulders with all this like life to it. What is a night angel? Where did this idea come from? <laughs> I can ask you the same question. Originally, it was supposed to be a little bit of a darker character. Um, and then throughout kind of looking at our show and seeing who we had for season three, I kind of decided that this would be a better direction to lighten up the costume a little bit and create kind of this, um, not a fallen angel and not the typical white angel that we would see, but something um, that becomes a little bit of, you know, here say a night creature. We've seen multiple wings on the show. We've seen the crow, you know, in season one that kind of had the fabricated foam wings. Then going into the butterfly, I used a wire approach so we could eliminate a lot of the weight. Um, we knew that it was gonna be part of the costume that stayed the, you know, the entire run of the show and that it's not something that she could take on and off um, because then we would lose kind of the aspect of the character. Um, so I wanted to bring a different approach to it. People love frog. I love this costume because it is obviously inspired by this like jazz era, zoot suit, um, like kind of Harlem vibe. How did this come about? Going back from So You Think You Can Dance, we do a lot of experimenting with zoot suits and trying to figure out how to make it work on stage. Um, it was one of these characters that I wanted the frog to be like the suave guy. I wanted a little bit of history behind him, which is why I took it into like the zoot suit era and kind of bringing back the 19, like 20s, 30s to it. When we um, designed the suit and I actually saw it fabricated, something was missing and I didn't want to add more fabric to it. I decided to hand paint it. So it kind of has on stage under a visual camera, you kind of see this 3D effect that adding all the wrinkles and all the shadows. So it's literally the way the costume was painted is wherever the light would hit it is where we would add the wrinkles for the paint. The swan, and obviously as Ken said, it has like a little bit of a Bjork uh, connotation to it, right. but it's also just a stunning piece of work. First thing that we all go to is Bjork. And it was such an incredible moment in fashion. It was such an incredible historic moment in just costuming in general. Like what she did totally crossed over into our world, you know? And for me, of course, like not just being inspired, I wanted to do something also different enough to where people could have that reference, but also see this costume in a different light. So um, we took the idea of a real swan, you know, making a mask where it was an extended neck. Um, the first time I tried that was the, with Flamingo for season two. How do you lift the mask off the shoulders and create a different kind of um, construction? to them being able to sing and visually see through the screen. And then also almost misguiding the height of the performer it was probably a very much like my internal McQueen. It took us days of trial and error to get that right. And then of course, like making sure that this was a mobile costume at the same time. I didn't want it to be heavy. I didn't want to drag it to the floor. Um, I knew that Bella had a great body. So I wanted to show the legs and I wanted to show the arms and really kind of give it more of a ballerina approach. But at the same time, give it as much fashion as we could you know and it really on stage was one of the most stunning costumes and one of my favorites to create as well what can you tell us about what you're thinking for season four it's very colorful very diverse i would say and i'm gonna start playing with a lot more technical aspects to the costumes what can we see on stage that kind of can't transform us into a different world. I have two little kids under two. I see every day different ways of development and I see every everything that's like so pure and colorful and toy-like. So um, there could be aspects of um, a lot of child play into season four and kind of um, heart warm take on um, even the animal kidnaps or, you know, a lot more imagination. And like you said, a little bit of a cartoony approach. So I think you'll see a, a lot of like child of play that will come out. <laughs>